Hey, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I am here in the Collider studio at the Kia Telluride Supper Suite with everyone behind Downhill here at, at the Sundance Film Festival. Uh, I want to start by saying congrats on the movie, sincerely. Um, uh, I have many things I want to talk about with this thing, but most people have not like seen footage or are that familiar with the film, so do you guys want to sort of do the generic thing and sort of say what it's about? Yes, yeah, yeah, so I was going <laughs> For me, I wanted to. No one cares for this bit. Okay, so this. (laughs) It's a film (laughs) about a family on a ski vacation, and um, and they are they are having a good time and everything's going very well. And they're in Austria, I should say, and it's an American family, and they're sitting outside a restaurant, and all of a sudden there's a loud boom, and there's an avalanche very far off in the distance and it looks cool and everybody stands up to take pictures and then the avalanche starts coming closer and people are sort of wondering wondering and then uh the avalanche it seems is upon them and the mother played by myself with her two grabs her two children and her husband played by mr will ferrell behind me yes grabs his cell phone and runs away and that is the beginning of the picture. And the rest of the picture is the unraveling of that particular sweater uh, for the rest of the film and how this couple and this family uh, reconcile that moment. And they drive a Kia. <laughs> <laughs> big plot point. Yeah, big, big plot, plot point. point. <laughs> um, which, uh, which ironically keeps breaking down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. We'll edit that part oh, out. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and that's the end of the interview. Good day, sir. Let go of me. Let go of me. The Kia Lounge <laughs> Supper Club <laughs> is over. One of the things that I thought was great about this is that it is not Hollywoodized. This is a realistic depiction of a family and what would happen. Um, yeah. And it, yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> Um, Thank you. And the other, <laughs> um, but but being serious, like it's it's characters that I think fans of yours might not be used to. You know, like it, this isn't being played for laughs. This is not. You know, this is a, a serious relationship. Um, can you sort of talk about if that what, if that's what drew you to to the script, and um, if you guys can talk about the fact that this is being depicted very realistically? Who's going first? You guys start with part A. Well, it is what drew us to the script. Be quiet, please. (laughs) Um, uh, Because I I think Will and I were both drawn to the drama of the script, and uh, and it's a character-driven drama, but it also has aspects of uh, comedy within it. But they're pretty authentic comedic moments born out of real situations. They're not broad, per se. Um, uh, But it was a chance for us to flex a little dramatic muscle. And it... uh, also, all of us being such fans of the original, which uh, tonally, as Jim has so astutely, astutely, no, astutely, astutely, just astute. You don't okay. have to put on the same thing. Astutely, it, there's a cringe factor throughout the movie where you're, once this yeah. supposed avalanche happens, you're kind of uneasy throughout the whole film, and and to kind of, you know, stay on that that tightrope. Through a, through a project was something that I think appealed to us as well. And I think that, you know, we, uh, with The Way Way Back and now with Downhill, it's like we are attracted to stories about flawed characters uh, and also the balance between comedy and drama because obviously we live our days consistently with laughing and crying within seconds of each other sometimes because that's where... You more than others. No, I know. I'm, 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 can I, can, <laughs> let me just share some pain that I am dealing with. And I know this is a weird time to do this, but Kia's has asked me to. Oh, good um, so, <laughs> but I think that's, that for us is what we love in the, the storytelling of this. And it was in Force Majeure and in Town Hill as well, which is this balance of these characters who are very real, who had this very extreme circumstance. And like a play, you're, they're both sort of structured in a play. Play, you're watching these two characters, basically their hearts change. Will they be together or will they won't be together? And so it's this one incident and you sort of watch this journey that how it's a ripple effect for them. And I think that's why we like the balance of, of, of laughing through moments that kind of make us cringe and feel like this is really serious. 
one of the things is that, well, just for people that are watching, even though there's a lot of serious moments, there's plenty of levity in the film, which brings me uh, to your character. Um, was, I got it. <laughs> was, was everything that you said... <laughs> That's good. One of the things is there's such... I mean, we could, as we're watching this, you're seeing how funny everybody is. How much is what you said scripted? How much are people adding to it in the moment? Because... I mean, the theater that I saw it in, people were laughing very, very hard at what you were saying. Um, you know, the first day that we had on set, that I had on set, was with Julia and Will, and we had this dinner party scene, and I have never <laughs> had such a hard time keeping a straight face. I'm usually pretty good at not going up, but these guys were so funny, and they um, improvise a lot as well as the script, so there was there's a, quite a bit of improvisation in there, like little bits at the end of scenes and stuff like that, but the script was so great like so well observed my character is kind of mysterious uh, her name's Charlotte she is at the hotel when they turn up and she seems to work at the hotel but they can never really quite get a handle on does she work there or is she just a guest at the hotel and she kind of insinuates herself in their life and brings her European values to the table about about life and um, individuality sexuality she's kind of an in-your-face kind of character that is very accurate. Um, I, I want to say more, but I want people to enjoy the movie. Uh, for the two of you, uh, you guys sort of join the film, and I would say, well, you're mentioned throughout the entire film, but you really join in like the second act. Great. Uh, <laughs> yes. So talk a little bit about uh, who you guys play and how much fun maybe you had making the film. Uh, we play a couple who are in the sort of early serotonin-soaked phases of love where you don't notice the cracks in the plaster um, between the two of you. And so we're sort of a, a foil a little bit to these guys who are much further down the road. And um, we're on a European, we're kind of like... Self-exploratory, adventurous trip to Europe together. Right. And we overlap their trip and then kind of get dragged into their family drama and have very different reactions to the situation. Um, yeah. Was this one of these shoots that you guys had a blast on? Was it, did it ever feel challenging? There was, will you tell, we yeah, were in, <laughs> one of the drivers on the production was such a nice guy, but this was my favorite thing that happened on the, we <laughs> said to Zoe, right? On, on one of the drives from the airport said, um, you know, it's so funny, because we shot in Austria. He said, 80 years ago, we were fighting over pretty much nothing. Uh, and now look at us. And that, so was, that was my transpo. World War II. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my ride from the airport pretty much to Fist. So, isn't that crazy? And, uh, <laughs> so it's good we to mend what was basically so a, a superficial yeah. rift in the first place. <laughs> we had a lot of discussions about World War II. <laughs> <laughs> Changing geopolitical map. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your character also adds some levity to Downhill. Um, can you sort of mention who you play? Well, I play the guy who started the controlled avalanche. <laughs> uh, and they, they, they come to the authorities kind of to, to complain. And, and there's not much to get. <laughs> that, that's very true. Uh, I'm, I'm obsessed with the editing process because that is the final rewrite. I'm curious, uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, how maybe the film was adjusted in the editing room or was it what you envisioned going in? Yeah, it was a sort of long and arduous process because uh, what was important to us, I think, was really finding the right tone for the movie. And we all collectively talked, you know, before we started shooting about what we we're hoping to achieve and you know it's it's a delicate uh, matter because you have these kind of two incredible actors who are more you know recognized for comedy a, a lot of the time and with our film I think we wanted to not mislead the audience into that this was going to be a big broad comedy because it's really about real people and real emotional um, circumstances right yeah so I don't know, I just lost my breath. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> I felt like I was having a heart attack. Oh my God. Kia! 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 Um, no, so in the editing process, we just wanted to make sure that we felt even all the way through, I think, and not uh, push the comedy too hard, but also provide you know moments of levity, like you suggested, that 
that sort of relief that, that released the pressure um, in those sort of bigger emotional scenes. Yeah, we had. I mean, we had scenes came in and out of certain cuts, which was kind of interesting because you move one piece and that affects everything, as you know. Uh, but that really spoke to 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 the tone of it all. It's like we had a, a key scene in the beginning of the movie that was sort of them arriving. Uh, it was funny, and but we were thinking, does this mislead you into the wrong movie? Because as soon as that avalanche hits, it sort of is driven by that avalanche. And by that I mean it's such a dramatic moment that all the comedy after that really is paid off from that drama. So we found ourselves like you know trying pretty uh, drastic cuts just to say, oh my God, that's that's the movie that we're looking for, you know. So so it was definitely a process. Yeah. It, it eventually came together too a lot with the our composer and the um, Volker Bertelman who did all the composing for the film and I, I think when we added music to uh, the film it really helped even the tone in a way that um, we were hoping for because it sort of provided this kind of nice uh, it just settled it in a way that, that maybe it hadn't previously. I sincerely want to say thank you so much for coming by the studio, answering our fun questions, and have a fantastic, like the movie's fantastic, have a fantastic Sundance. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you very much. Sorry about that heart attack I had earlier. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs>